All right. Welcome to Panasonic Presents. Come on down. So we're going to be doing presentations starting today through Wednesday, generally from about 10 to 4. And uh, for the first one, we brought, what do we call you, internet legend? <laughs> it's better not being <laughs> recorded, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Barry Green is going to do a presentation on our new 4K handheld camcorder, the CX350. Take it away, Barry. All right, am I, is this live? Is the mic on? You guys hear? That's fantastic. Well, I'm just, I'm surprised when anything works. I'm glad. You know, when you get to my age, it's like the body, the back has stopped working and everything, so things work. Good day. Um, so today, well, by way of introduction, for those who haven't sat through one of my presentations before, uh, about 16 years ago, I found a little camera, the Panasonic DVX100, and I got a little obsessed with it because it like turned the entire video world upside down. And then my wife asked me what I was doing because I wasn't working anymore because I just spent all my time on this forum and talking about this camera, and she's like, you've got to go back to work. So I wrote a book on it and it sold and so i've been doing that for like 15 years so they bring me out to talk about these things not because i'm a panasonic employee because i'm not but because i am a fairly rabid fan i do have some experience i won an emmy award for producing a series of commercials for the better business bureau years ago and i i, I guess i get a little hyper and they kind of like that because that's not something you normally find in a camcorder presentation cx350 i'm going to get a little bit hyper on this thing is the best camera Panasonic has produced since that DVX100. I'm probably not supposed to say that because they still sell other models and they still want you to buy those. But this thing, they have gone back to the roots and they have taken off the shackles. They've just given you everything. It's got all the power of the, of the processing engine of their, their big camcorders. It's like the PX270 in that way. When they, when they took a $30,000 camera, pulled the processing engine in and put it in a $5,000 camera, and that thing was fantastic. This is a 4K version of that. It's got all the power, all the goody, all the wonderful, and all the wonderful features that we used to take for granted, but then as cameras got more complex, they started to disappear. Because, you know, you got to make compromises. If it's a 4K camera, you can't have your LCD and your viewfinder at the same time, so just live with it. All that nonsense is gone. It's all caught up, so now it's just a usable user camera. The thing is the best camera to use that they've come out with in quite a while, I think. The general ideas behind here, a handheld camera that can do practically anything. Of course, everybody wants to promise that. I was thinking earlier today, and I have no idea how quickly I'm going to run out of time, but I'm still going to rant a little. I've been an anti-DSLR guy for many years. Those of you who have seen me before I know that I rant about those things. Because they're insane to use. It's just the totally wrong tool for the job. And I was thinking, because I started in film. I started way back. I was those BB... Uh, Better Business Bureau commercials, I shot those on 35mm on an IMO. That was one reason why they gave us the award. They're like, you did what? On a budget? And IMO got me 60 seconds of recording time on a roll of film. That's all you got. You have the, the prime lenses. The DSLR to me is like using a Bolex again, right? From 1966. It's this clunky thing with the, and you have the one lens and you had to change. Video cameras had evolved over the years to give you all this wonderful flexibility. Even if a tape camera had an hour of recording time and a 10 times zoom lens, all these features and functionality that made them so usable, this thing has pushed it even further. So we've got a 4K sensor in there, full 4K images, oversampled 4K images because it's 15 million pixels. So it actually has twice as many pixels as it needs. So ultra, ultra, ultra sharp 4K but simultaneously it's very sensitive. Normally we would see like an F8 rating at 2000 lux on a camera like this. This is F11, F12, F13, depending on if you have the recording mode in normal or high sensitivity. So it's nice and sensitive and it's got good low light performance, which is what everybody's always asking for. In the recording formats, for years, companies were hung up on giving us these 8-bit 420 formats. They're done with that now. We've got high bandwidth, 4K, 422, 10-bit, at 60 frames per second. 
in H.264 and even in H.265. Well, it's 420 and H.265. Let's not get hung up on that. There are good reasons for that. But they're both fantastic recording formats, so full fledged quality. External recorders are no longer necessary to get good, good image quality out of these. Small size and low power consumption. You got to see the size of this. It is the same size as the DVX100 was, which, which if you don't remember the DVX100, and I wouldn't blame you because none of, well, maybe one or two of you have been around as long as I have, but that thing transformed cable TV. It, would, it instantly transformed cable TV and the way TV shows were shot because it could do everything and it was so light and hand holdable and it delivered great quality. Try this thing out. There's a booth over here on the far end behind the entry desk. It is four pounds. The DVX200 that they still sell weighs six pounds. If you know the backpacker saying that ounces are pounds by the end of the day, get my age, carry around a six pound camcorder for eight hours, it starts to hurt. Four pounds is a featherweight. It's fantastic. And the size is smaller, so the balance is perfect. It's not wide anymore. It's not heavy anymore. I have an H... Oh, don't do that. You're wearing the lavalier. Don't do that. I have an HPX 250. Wonderful camera for its time, but it's huge and fat, and you can't hold it for more than a couple of minutes before your wrist starts aching because it's so wide, the balance tips it over. This thing is perfectly handhold. The power consumption, you get about three and a half hours out of the stock battery, which will recharge in less than three hours. So you could get through an entire day with just two batteries, one on the camera and one on the charger. You'll be fine, but they also have extended length batteries. You get five and a half, even six hours out of a battery. One battery is hard to argue with. Uh, and of course, you rag on the DSLRs for a while. No recording time limits, no overheating, no any of that. You could do a 12-hour conference all day long, set the camera up, record. It'll just catch it all. The lens. Got to go a little nuclear on the lens here. 20 times optical with incredible sharpness. It is crisp. It's over 2,000 lines of resolution in the recorded format. 20 times optical, which is the widest starting point of, I think, as far as I know, I may be lying because I haven't seen everything out there, but as far as I know, it's the widest lens of any camera of this type out there. Starts at a 24 millimeter equivalent of a 35 millimeter stills camera. Most cameras are 28 millimeters, like the, I'm probably not supposed to say the name of it, the EX1 from the camera company with the four letter S word. That was a 30 millimeter wide. This is 30% wider. I mean, you can get shots when you, when you can't back up anymore, the camera can keep backing up for you because you can get wide enough. But then you go to the zoom, you got 20 times optical, so that's equivalent of about a 480, maybe 500 millimeter stills camera lens. And then you can just keep going because they have this eye zoom feature. It's a completely lossless, extending zoom. It's not like a digital zoom. It, it crops in on the sensor. But remember, we got twice as many pixels as we need to make the image. So cropping in a little, there's still full resolution. So you get effectively 24 times on the zoom. When you're shooting in high def, it goes up to 32 times. 32 times wide to it, phenomenal. It does have the three ring control. The zoom ring has been greatly improved. If you've tried an earlier model or if you even have one, get the latest firmware update because they really improved the zoom ring. So it's very nice now. As far as the features go for usability, philosophically, this camera is designed for, like I said, to do everything. What they're really aiming at is that they're recognizing that a huge growth market is live production. Not everything is about cinema. It can be about cinema. You have a hybrid log gamma in there. You have a very large sensor. It's a one inch sensor. You can do cinematic looking stuff. But you can also do live stuff. You can connect straight to the internet. You can upload to Facebook Live or YouTube Live. You can connect in an NDI environment. We'll be talking about those things. And it, again, the emphasis is on usability, which to me, we passed the threshold of image quality being the determining factor a while ago because every camera puts out great images. It's hard to find one that doesn't look great. So to me, now it's all about what hoops do I have to jump through to get those great images? And that's where I think this camera excels. The codecs and formats, it's got everything. Let's just sum it up like that. But it's got the 1080 and the 720 and standard def and ultra high def. It's got 
24p and 30p and 60p. It's got European frame rates of 20 or Australian frame rates of 25 and 50. It's got interlaced. It's got progressive. It's got 422. It's got 10 bit. It's got 4208 bit. It's got ABCHD if you want. And coming soon, we'll talk about it in a, in a later slide. They're even going to add the P2 formats and you can use the micro P2 cards. So it's like the summation of all Panasonic awesomeness that they've had for the last 15 years all coming together in this one camera. It's, it's fun. And as far as internet protocol workflow, which I was talking about, RTMP or RTSP, uh, you've got remote control from the app. Check out the app, it's kind of fun. You can, instead of having to use a wire controller and just controlling zoom, you can control the zoom and the iris and the black uh, levels in individually in red, green, and blue on the black pedal. You can control the master pedestal, the gain, the shutter speed, pretty much everything, including all the user buttons. You got a bunch of user buttons on the camera. You can activate those functions from the remote control app. So that's all very cool. Places to shoot, like we say, they're talking about a number of live production environments because Live is currently where it's at, and that doesn't just mean, you know, at a house of worship doing a broadcast, although it can, if you get in a, a networked in an NDI HX workflow, you can have tremendous live support there. But reality TV, nature programming, I was just talking to somebody about nature programming, and, and uh, they said they were trying to recommend them to use the EVA 1, which is a wonderful cinema camera, but it is not very easy to get a 32 times zoom on an EVA 1. This thing, it's in your hand 32 times. Uh, I'm not saying this is a better camera than the Evo 1, I'm saying that this is more suitable for that type of job. Uh, one person VJs, those are all very common. Uh, I saw a review, somebody said, because of lightweight, you can actually vlog with the darn thing. He was walking and talking, holding it in front of it, you can actually vlog with it. Uh, travel, reality, everything. Um, Coaching analysis, it has a mode in there that's been specifically designed for coaching analysis software, a 720p60 mode at a very low bandwidth that it's found a lot of adoption in major universities and professional sports teams, so coaching analysis is a big thing. Live connectivity is a major thing. So look at the look at the live booth that they have here, like with their HLC 100 Stream Studio, or if you have a new tech TriCaster or something like that. They've integrated it with HX, as shown, like I say, on on the TriCaster or on the HLC 100. And that, if you haven't looked at NDI HX, it's not for everybody, but if it's for you, it's really cool because it stands the whole concept of connecting equipment on its head. Right now, if you wanted to plug in a camera to a monitor, you gotta run an SDI cable between the two. What if you need two monitors? Well, uh, you're kind of screwed. Well, you can get an H, uh, a splitter, a signal splitter maybe, and power that, and then plug one more in there, or maybe you have an out on the monitor, or whatever. NDI says nonsense. It's like, it's like a web page. You, you host a website, you put up a page on the internet, and anybody in the world can look at that page that's what NDIHX is like. The camera becomes an image server, and you can plug in uh, Ethernet cables to, to 10 monitors, 15 monitors, doesn't matter, it's just an Ethernet cable. You can have somebody back in Seattle watching what you're doing as long as they log into the network. So NDIHX really opens up some options for live production on top of, as we already discussed, the ROP app and the, uh, the streaming, Facebook streaming, straight to YouTube. You can do that over the Ethernet cable to, if you want to output the highest quality video or if you if you have your phone serving as a hotspot in the middle of who knows where, you connect the camera to the phone. You need an optional adapter, I probably should say, it's an AJWM50, but you can connect wirelessly through that and stream directly up to the internet. It's got data rates from one half a megabit up to 24 megabits, so you can choose your quality, your size, your frame rate, everything. I mentioned football and coaching analysis. It's a great camera for sports. Um, like I say, the viewfinder and the LCD are live at the same time. So if it's bright out and you can't see the reflectivity on the viewfinder, you do have the LCD, you have the 20 times zoom, you've got the full 60p frame rate. You can be 32 times in high def. If you only need high def, it makes a tremendous high def camera down converting from a 15 million pixel image down to the two million pixels of of HD, so it's tremendous for that. And that's what I mentioned, that uh, 
8 megabit uh, recording mode specifically for sports coaching, and again using the ROP app. Again, for news, the lightweight, I don't know why they said five pounds, unless maybe that's with a microphone, because I believe it's 4.4 pounds. If I'm wrong, sue me. Well, don't, please don't sue me. I don't want to be sued. Um, but check with the manufacturer. Uh, my understanding is 4.4 pounds, and it seems very light to me. The optical image stabilization, autofocus, focus assist, all that kind of stuff that w in film we kind of recoil at, these are tremendous features in live. So optical image stabilization, we know that we've always had OIS. Everybody knows what OIS is. It cancels out a little bit of panning or a little bit of tilting motion. That's fine, and OIS has never been enough, but they have the hybrid OIS, this five-axis hybrid image stabilizer. We'll talk about it in a minute, but it's a revelation. Try that out. That is so good, and it, it, it enhances the ability to do handheld stuff to the point where I don't even bother carrying a tripod most times. Even doing an interview with somebody from 10 feet away, handheld, looks rock solid. It's, it's great. Um, the autofocus is very good. The focus is you can have the four times magnified. You can have the red peaking. You can have LCD detail, all sorts of focuses to make sure you get great sharp pictures. It records on SD cards. You need generally a V30 card, UHS-1, U3, however they call those. Uh, but a V30 card, if you want the best recording formats, V60 cards. I bought a 64 gig V30 card for like 20 bucks. I mean, it's very affordable to be able to record on that. And as it says, P2 support is coming, so you can already use your micro P2 cards as recording cards for SD, but you'll be able to record the P2 formats. In June, you'll get the ABC Long G, and then in December, you'll get all the all intra formats. So you can integrate, if you already have a, a complete P2 production system, you can integrate and use even these same formats. RTMP and ROP, we already talked about. ROP is the, the app that you can remote control with. You also can use a wired controller. It's a little bit different than prior Panasonic's. It uses the LANC or LANC protocol. It doesn't use the old Panasonic protocol, but it's very common. There are millions of them out there, so easily available. Uh, let's swap over. Hey, that's everything I already talked about. And I am um, closing out time. We, we got a little bit before we get there. Um, the LCD is very nice, very good, very sharp, very cool. A little reflective like all the LCDs are today, but the viewfinder is tremendous. Look at the viewfinder. It's even sharper, very crisp and clear. Um, I said simultaneous output of the LCD, the viewfinder, the SDI, and the HDMI. It even has a standard F composite output. That's a big thing for a lot of areas of the world still. We probably don't use it, but I still get questions from guys who are doing legal video who have to deliver a DVD. You could output live straight to a DVD recorder. It's got you covered. 24-bit uh, audio. If you're recording an AVC HD, it's still 16 bits because AVC HD is a 60-bit format, but everything else gets a full 24 bits. And it has time code integration, so you can synchronize with a time code slate or another camera or whatever. It's got a true time code in and out port. Five axis image stabilization. I don't want to oversell it because, of course, you can go beyond its limits. But try it in terms of regular image stabilization. Instead of just up and down and side to side, it adds rotation. It adds sliding up and down. It adds sliding side to side. Well, if you think doing a handheld shot, what are you going to get? Up and down and rotation as your hands are unsteady. Uh, this cancels it out. And on this camera, for the first time, that hybrid works in ultra high def. So you don't have to leave it behind when you go to UHD. You've got ultra high def image stabilization. Try it out. I'm saying from a, from a comfortable interview distance, you'll be easily able to get a tripod steady shot and you can even do handheld shots, watchable shots, at 20 times. Maybe not perfect, because come on, it's like a 500 millimeter lens, but they'll be watchable. They won't be you know, this nonsense that we've had in years past. So that is one of my favorite features. The optical image stabilization, they've even taken that a step further in optimizing it for tripod use. Because for years and years and years in my books, I've always had to say, don't use OIS on a tripod. 
okay? Because it will fight the tripod. You pan the tripod and OIS will be like, oh, wait, I see motion, let me cancel you out. And then it'll hold, you know, pointing over here as you're panning. And then when you stop, it goes, slide. And it's like, what the frick did I just happen to watch? That's what OIS on a tripod does. Here, they understand that you're gonna be using tripod, so they made three modes. They got your normal for handheld. It'll cancel out any motion. When you're on a tripod and you're not gonna be moving the camera, then it goes into hyper-aggressive mode to cancel out tiny motions. So vibration, if, if you're up on a pedestal and somebody walks by and that, that little bit of shake that you get, it'll cancel that out because it knows there's not supposed to be any motion or they take it to a third mode, they'll cancel out the vibration, but allow you panning and tilting without that, that catch up or that jerk that happens. So optical image stabilization, very advanced in this camera. Uh, gone through all that and I've run out of time. So the last thing is they brought me back one more time. We're doing another book on this. The book is pretty much ready, but with NAB being what it is, they're busy putting on the NAB show, so they'll review and get that available sometime, maybe in, maybe in April, maybe, I can't speak for them, I don't know when they did it, but I sent them the finished book, uh, 214 pages, who can write a book of 214 pages on a camcorder, but clearly you see I get into these things. We're also doing a series of 10 videos, I had someone very kindly come up today and tell me how helpful the videos were on the EVO one, we're doing the same thing for the CX350 and I'm doing a batch of six scene files. So there's gonna be a lot of online support in addition to dbxuser.com. I'm gonna give a plug for it that you should go to because if you have any questions about these cameras, that's where everybody who uses these cameras goes to worldwide. So that's my presentation on CX350. I recommend you check it out. It's the most exciting camera and it's affordably priced. It's like $39.95 I think is retail. I think the street price is like $36.95. They've crammed a lot of power in this. I mean, it's got full vlog in there. It's got film rack. I can keep going. But I'm supposed to stop so that you guys can ask questions and so the next person can get on in the next five minutes. Any? Okay. Start again. That, that was off. We have a few minutes for questions. So does anyone have a question for Barry? I can pass the mic to you. No? We On the ROP, is there any thought of Windows, uh, and I've got a couple surface books. And, uh, um, it, you dropped out a bit. Come again? On the ROP, the little chip that plugs into the camera, yeah. is there any possibility that you'll add Windows 10 to that? I've got a couple surface pros. It doesn't. Sure could use it. it it's an app. It works on Android tablets, Android phones, uh, iPads, um, iOS phones. It, that particular app does not work on a computer at all. You could use the NDIHX. I should mention that NDIHX functionality is a, an optional license. Uh, they don't charge you for that functionality, but you have to go to New Tech and buy a license. If you had NDIHX, you could do with some remote control, not a lot. It gives you some focus and some zoom control. Um, but no, there's no direct computer connectivity that I know of other than NDIHX. All right, what else? any other questions? All right, thank you very much for sitting through this, and I'm going to be doing these twice a day. So, all right, thank you very much. Have a great NAB.